Hello everyone, welcome to uh, lecture four. That is about remotely sensed information for managing disaster risks. <clears throat> so the main question here when we learn about remote sensing and GIS for disaster risk management is <clears throat> how can we use remote sensing data for uh, disaster risk management. So one of the most common application of remote sensing data for DRM is to to develop <coughs> a vegetation index and use that vegetation index for index based insurance and for damage assessment after disaster happens. <coughs> so Various remote sensing based indices and combinations have, you know, served as a predictor for crop yield. You know, most of the time in Ethiopia, the most common disaster is drought. Drought usually brings, you know, a failure in uh, crop and that crop failure also brings um, a loss in crop yield. And the difficult thing is, you know, how much damage does that drought, you know, bring to that society is a major question that is very difficult to answer. <clears throat> so in order to assess the crop damage as a result of drought, we can easily use remote sensing data and develop vegetation index so that we can easily estimate the crop damage happened in a certain area. So for that damage assessment, we can use different vegetation index. One of the first uh, commonly used vegetation index is vegetation condition index. It can be calculated once we computed normalized difference vegetation index. How can we cal cal calculate NDVI? NDVI can be calculated depending on the sensor type. Most of the time you calculate in DVI from near infrared and red band. Once we compute that, we can easily convert vegetation condition index. <clears throat> we can also calculate temperature condition index if we have maximum temperature and minimum temperature. Once we calculated temperature condition index and vegetation condition index, we can compute vegetation health index. It is usually believed and it is it is output of a certain uh, <clears throat> researchers. Uh, vegetation health index is directly related to crop yield. Okay, rather than relating NDVI directly to yield, they transform the original NDVI into vegetation condition index and temperature condition index. And these two index in a combined manner convert into vegetation health index. And this vegetation health index <clears throat> is believed to be related to crop yield in a very good correlation. So uh, important remote sensing based data rather than in DVI include the vegetation condition index and temperature condition index to calculate vegetation health index. So in this, you know, remote sensing use for damage assessment, they have used vegetation health index to arrive at estimating some kind of crop yield. So they derived this kind of equation. Crop yield can be estimated by this simple regression equation. Okay, if we take vegetation health index as in as independent variable and crop yield as a dependent variable. So we can create this relationship, okay? So vegetation health index is a spatial data. So you can get a spatial information from this. Using this, you can easily estimate the yield loss as a result of disaster, okay? Another remote sensing data that can be applied for disaster assessment is rainfall and NDVA anomaly maps. The first thing that you need to ask is what is anomaly? 
anomaly is the dictionary meaning is it is a deviation from the normal a deviation from the normal so you might ask one thing when i tell you this what does normal mean when you say anomaly is a deviation from normal what is this normal is this normal defined as the average of five years the average of 10 years the average of 13 years of data or well it depends on different situations okay so you can you can have an anomaly for rainfall data and you can have an anomaly for rain divide data okay so if you have rainfall anomaly map what does it mean the amount of rainfall you are analyzing as compared to the normal rainfall could be anomalous be it negative anomaly or positive anomaly if it is negative anomaly it is considered as below normal condition could be drought if it is above normal it is a very uh, good condition well vegetated condition sometimes flood can be uh, considered so let's talk about rainfall anomaly maps rainfall anomaly maps usually derived from rainfall estimates rfe and vegetation indices so below normal conditions usually relate to drought above normal conditions are flooding conditions <clears throat> so this is an example of anomaly map rainfall anomaly map this is a june 2011 monthly rainfall <clears throat> which ranges up to 255 for the whole of africa we can also take for ethiopia okay now this is a trim trmm 3b43 product it's a special uh, rainfall map it is 25 kilometer by 25 kilometer so people have used this uh, trim product for derivation of rainfall anomaly maps but these days there are a lot of similar uh, raster uh, rainfall maps to be used for disaster assessment or rainfall anomaly maps okay now the question that you can ask when you see this uh, image is what is this is a june 2011 rainfall normal or not normal is it a negative anomaly or a positive anomaly to do that or to know this you have to compare this june 2011 rainfall map with the previous June 2010 or with the last or with the previous three consecutive years of June rainfall okay let's compare now what does what, what did the 2009 June rainfall look like and what did the 2010 June rainfall look like we can make simple a simple difference rainfall of the June 2011 minus this if we get a positive result then it is a positive anomaly that means it, it tells you good condition if it gives you negative result it is tells you that a uh, very bad condition okay we can also make a ratio okay a ratio we can also uh, create a normal year by making the average of the five previous years of June rainfall and subtracting it from the current June 2011 rainfall and if you get negative then that is drought if you get positive then that is so you can create uh, a normal rainfall by making average of five years 10 years 15 years 30 years 30 years average could usually be considered as a normal year okay so what is this multi-annual average it could be long-term average or short-term average usually if you are talking about long-term average it means 30 years but if you are talking about short-term average you are talking about five or ten years we apply this technique long-term average or you take 30 years of data in climatological application okay but this one you may use it for crop monitoring short term okay okay there are three anomaly calculation methods 
How can we calculate anomalies? Absolute anomaly, relative anomaly, and standardized anomaly. Absolute anomaly is the difference between the current value with the average of the previous 5, 10, 30 years. If you are making a ratio, then it is relative anomaly. If you are making standardized anomaly, you are expected to subtract the average of 35 years or 10 years from the current divided by the standard deviation. Because of this standard deviation, we have got the name standardized anomaly. Okay? It's very simple. You can have a look at the, these different examples of different anomaly types. And, you know, multi, you know, different agencies usually use different types of anomaly indicators. Okay? For example, most organizations consistently use one type of anomaly in agrometeorological and food security bulletins. For example, JRC Food Sec. This is a European Union Joint Research Center Mars Unit Food Sec section. About, uh, for example, FIUSNET usually uses absolute anomaly, while this one uses relative anomaly. So these are uh, the, the things that is. And SADC generally uses relative anomaly. SADC means the Southern African Development Community. And Early Warning Explorer usually uses standardized anomaly. So different agencies usually use different. So this is NDVI anomaly. So NDVI anomaly tells you it, it shows you the deviation from normal NDVI. It also tells you the, the condition of the existing state. Okay? If you are observing below normal NDVI, then it is drought. And if you are observing above normal NDVI, then you are observing good conditions. So NDVI tells you the measure of vegetation performance. In a good in weather condition, vegetation usually performs better. Okay? This is indicated by a very positive NDVI value. Okay? So and NDVI is usually strongly related with rainfall received. Okay? So if you have rainfall maps, you can use rainfall anomaly. Or if you do not have rainfall map, you can indirectly use NDVI maps. Or you can use both NDVI and rainfall anomaly maps. Okay, take a look at this one. For example, uh, you are uh, comparing October 2010, for example, January 2010 image, April 2010 image, and the the area is getting drier and drier. In October, the area is very dry. Okay, this is a mensely comparison. Now let's take a look at this NDVI anomaly example. You can compute absolute NDVI, relative and standard resident anomaly. If this NDVI anomaly map, the green ones are areas with positive vegetation growth, no drought. The negative ones are areas with drought observation. Okay. So this is a very uh, a good example of remote sensing data use for disaster risk uh, management. Thank you very much for time.